my multi-dimensional beings welcome or welcome back to my youtube channel one i'm so sorry if you hear a lot of background noises on base they are driving crazy i don't even know how they are even allowed to do that so this is a lot of room rooming going on so if you hear that my apologies but if you did not know from the title i am giving you my boot camp experience video and I know it has been very, very long. My apologies. My life has just been moving. Um, a lot has been going on, but everything has been going good so far. I have been enjoying my military experience so far. There's really nothing I could really complain about. But boot camp was a little crazy. Now, boot camp one, what I'm going to start off by telling you, it was never hard. Um, especially, specifically speaking for the Navy. Boot camp was not hard at all, y'all. I think anybody could graduate boot camp if they just really want to do it. It was so slight, I promise. But yeah, so the gist of this video is just my experience. And then in my next video, I will show you guys how to survive boot camp or how to actually get through it. A lot of the things that I'm going to cover in this video is going to correlate to that video, but I'll be more specific in the next one. So if you're ready to hear this experience, let's, let's get into it. Okay, so we're going to talk about night of arrival first, okay? So night of arrival, I arrived in Chicago, Illinois, and when I got to the airport, I really wasn't scared, but when I got on that bus, I was like, all right, <laughs> yeah, this shit is real. It's no turning back now. It was dark too, so when we were on the bus, I wasn't sure if you could use your phone or not. They said turn your phone off, I think, but I wanted to go on my phone so bad just to like text my mom or somebody, but I was too scared, and I sat in the front. So, and it was, uh, I think, somebody that was in the military, um, one of my shipmates, I guess, I can call him shipmates now. Um, he was in the, he was right in front of me, so I wasn't even trying to risk it. So I get there, you know. So there's one thing I want to tell you guys. Um, YouTube portrays this image that, well, like if you look up Navy, like boot camp, anything, they try to make it seem like they're yelling at you in your face, screaming at you. It's like real, real hectic. It was really smooth. Like we're gonna get into it, but in the beginning, beginning, when you first walk into that room and they say don't step on the flags, you're like lined up. Nobody was yelling. Like, the chief was loud, but he wasn't getting nobody's face screaming. I feel like he did scream at a couple people because they weren't, like, listening to simple details. But it really wasn't really scary, honestly. So they gave us that last little minute phone call. Um, I was kind of sad because I forgot to tell my mom I love her. So that was on my mind for a long time. But, yeah, so we're getting... I forgot the process, y'all. Like, I literally forgot the process into details. I wish I could remember. But I know that we signed some paper and we went into this room first to get like i guess checked in so mind you you're not gonna be sleeping for like a whole day um yeah they're gonna keep you up for a day that was the worst p days are the worst ask anybody you yeah i would never go back to p days generally speaking we had got fitted for shoes we had stayed on this little like shoe scanner thing to see how your feet curve whatever so that they can give you the right shoes that are comfortable for you my roommate just came in she's back there she said i'm famous yeah she's hiding now but yeah so the gist of uh p days you're just literally getting all the things that you need you box your civilian stuff up and I don't even know how to describe P-Days. It's just a long process. And P-Days isn't just a one-day thing. I think you're in P-Days for like a week before you actually go to your ship, which is just a building that your division is going to be in. Yeah, P-Days was horrible. Like, staying up, you get yelled at if you go to sleep. Uh, it was just very tiring. So, fast forward for P-Days, moving to the actual ship. Um, everybody was really excited about that. I was excited because the place that you were in before was just like the vibe i didn't really fuck with the vibe i didn't like that it was just too much um to explain but you're just only there for a week so during p days you're getting like vaccines and checkups make sure all your medical stuff is straight basically so the compartment the compartment where you so the compartment is called the ship but the ship is like a building but it's a compartment in the ship don't know how to explain it any easier but it was definitely bigger than the one that you were previously in and the head which is the shower was way like the bathroom was way more like bigger way more space um a bit cleaner i mean it gets dirty when it's like 50 girls in one bathroom 
but I like the uh, the head better. It was just way more space, a little bit more privacy than before. And yes, you're gonna be showering in front of all the females. You're gonna be butt naked and all that. So in boot camp, you're gonna be going through multiple inspections. You have drill, you have DMI, you have static. Basically, the gist of the inspections is like if you know how to fold all of your stuff that's in your rack correctly in the right proper place, it has to be in a specific place. You have to get dressed like the uniform on. It has to be like correct um, within like a certain time. Um, static is when like you had to like the whole compartment had to be clean and your rack, everybody's rack had to be made, their beds and all that. Y'all boot camp was a lot. It was so much to like. It's so much to cover. You just have to be there to experience it. So I'm gonna talk about leadership positions, but I'm gonna kind of set that to the end because the leadership positions, y'all. I'm gonna get into that. That. We're gonna get into it. PI, personnel inspections, um, is when you like put, so you have like three PIs. Your first PI, you're gonna be in your regular end-ups, which are, mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see my green uniform, that's your end-ups, you can be in that. And they go around, they ask you questions. So these questions are your chain of command, your general orders, sailor's creed, stuff like that. They're gonna go around and ask, oh, pay grades and rates of, uh, enlisted and officers. OPFA is the last uh, like physical like exam thing you have to go through to make sure that you are qualified enough to actually be in the, in the Navy. Um, you have an RDC assessment, which is before that. I think RDC assessment was like week four, and it doesn't like it counts, but it doesn't count towards if you was to get set back in training or you can't, um, you know, proceed. Um, so it consists of push-ups, planks, and a run. I mean, literally, that's it. You don't do sit-ups, pull-ups, none of that stuff. The amount of push-ups and the amount of time that you have to hold your plank for and the time for your run all depends on your age and your gender. So for me, my run, I had to do a 1.5 under or 14 minutes and 45 seconds. The first time I did it, I passed, but it was really close to, like, the time. But my OPFA, I definitely passed. I mean, I wouldn't be here because I wasn't planning about that run. I was... Literally, like, my body was so done after that run. Like, I felt sick. I was in pain. Like, it was just, that, sh that shit was hard, y'all. If you don't run now and you trying to join, you need to be running now, today. Like, I'm not even kidding. Like, run. So, let's talk about chow. Chow is the best, best, best time of the day because you're eating food. And you only have three chows. Morning, lunch, breakfast. I'm sorry. <laughs> breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So, you're not allowed to talk at chow, you're not supposed to, but people be talking. Uh, you gotta be, you gotta be slick, you know. But you're not supposed to. You're gonna get caught and yelled at. You might get it. It is when they basically make you do a list of workouts on the spot, basically. Chow, honestly, in my ship was not bad at all. They had their days, but it was really good. I enjoyed it. I couldn't really complain. Um, there's gonna be desserts there, like really just ice cream brownies cookies and stuff you can't eat none of that until like towards the end of training when you pass your opfa and go through battle stations so just be prepared you can't touch it don't even try to grab it like you're gonna get yelled at don't grab none of the sweets um i think you can eat chips my division was able to eat chips but some divisions i guess they don't allow it but we were eating chips we had hot cheetos and like baked chips healthy stuff i can say breakfast was the best meal of the day they had some lunches was good they had like this chicken sandwich and they had like this sauce that literally tasted just like um chick-fil-a sauce but it was like warm it was really good y'all like they knew what they was doing with those uh chicken sandwiches so let's talk about standing watch so for me that is like the only thing i hate doing in the military honestly i just don't like standing watch but you have to stand watch you are like basically the protectors, um, the guards, I guess you could say. Um, but standing watch at boot camp, you have um, multiple watches. You have ship staff, you have auxiliary watches when you're like out in the hallway just standing there for like two hours. Um, and it literally, um, auxiliary watch starts around like nighttime, like towards taps. Taps is when it's time to go to sleep um, and the RDCs leave the compartment and it's just you guys, the females or males. In the compartment not together but like you know you're alone the RDCs are gone but in compartment watch you have rover and you have security security was the worst because you're just standing at the front of the door on your two feet not even moving you could move you have to go to the bathroom so roving 
you're able to like walk around you're able to um sit down i suppose to but some people were sitting down, some people were sleep. You're not supposed to sleep on watch. That is not something you're supposed to be doing. Do not sleep on watch. Yeah, roving was just way more like, it, it went by faster because you're walking around. You can walk around and you're just going around the compartment, like in the head, you know. So be aware, people do still in boot camp. If you have like things like of sorts, um, eventually you get a lock and you can lock your stuff in your drawer that's in your rack. But people were stealing things like in the beginning was really bad. <clears throat> Um, people were stealing stuff, females were tripping out, and like, we're supposed to be a teen, I'm supposed to be stealing, which is true, but it started to get so annoying, cause I'm like, why are y'all even stealing? Like, what, what do you even think that's gonna get you? I mean, like, we can't even get much. Anyway, not so, some things we just can't get when we are able to go to the next, the next is like a school, we get things. So we are getting the same shit, like, why are you stealing? The main things people were like, Realizing that was missing was like our PT shorts. Like my shorts were gone for like a week. I had to wear the same shorts for like a week. Was pissed off. But I don't know, it was because like the way we were washing our clothes was all mixed up and stuff like that. So a lot of people's shirts and shorts were missing. Some people's makeup, I guess. I don't know, it was dumb stuff. So the boys, ladies, there are gonna be some annoying males in your division. Mainly you're in, the, in your division. Um, my bro div, my bro div males weren't annoying at all because I didn't really know them, but I was cordial with most of them, and none of them gave me a hard time. Um, but it was the males in my division. They hated me so bad because I would ask a lot of questions, and they tell you to ask questions. Your RDCs tell you to ask questions if you're confused, and I'm the type of person that's really bold and confident, and I'm gonna ask a question if I feel like I need to ask a question. And they thought my questions were dumb questions, but there were a lot of females coming up to me and saying, thankful that you actually asked that question because I was too scared to ask it, and I didn't want to ask it. So don't be afraid to ask questions, and don't let the males try to pick on you, because they were doing that, and it was like, they had all these rules about no bullying, fraternization, but those males were doing it, like, real bad. But it didn't get to me, like, it got to me a little bit, but it made me grow tough skin, you know? I wasn't going like that. And they stink, so. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about um, the leadership positions that I got into and the last, not, okay, so the role that I ended up with last wasn't a leadership position, but it was still, like, something to do. But um, my rate, if you don't know, I am a YN, which stands for Yeoman, and I talked about this in my other video, which is um, basically someone who does admin work, paperwork, filing paperwork, managing people's finance work, stuff like that. So they have a Yeoman in your division, but you're really just doing like a muster. Muster is when you're like taking roll, calling, making sure everybody is accounted for, and you're gonna go pick up medical records and stuff like that. Little slight easy things, um, now that I'm thinking about it, compared to what I'm gonna be doing now. But I was a yeoman for a short time, then I went to being a rock. Um, a rock is a person who calls cadence and is basically the right hand man for your ARPOC. And ARPOC is like basically the leader of the division. He takes control of the division and stuff like that. So when you're marching, ARPOC and a rock stand outside of the group when you're marching. Like this is like the group here, and then they're like over here next to it. Um, so a rock is like calling cadence, like one, two, three, four, one, two, three. One. And actual like cadences, like a hostage situation. <laughs> I miss me A Rock. I love it. Okay, so after I was A Rock, I became a flag, and I love being a flag. So flags are the people who hold the flag when you march, basically. So I was flag one. So I held our divisional flag, and eventually we got all of our flags. So I got different flags two times, cause it's like it's like a order of where the flags um, are supposed to be, like who, which flag holds which flag. I love being a flag. I loved having to be at the front too, cause you're gonna see me first. Um, yes, I loved being a flag. I think that was like the coolest thing. Um, to do and it's like less responsibility I kind of didn't like the RDCs being up my ass so much because like you feel like you're doing something right and they just yelling at you all the time and it was also a lot of favoritism with the leadership positions in my division when it came down to the RDCs not my first one though my first RDC she was a chief loved her so much she actually made my experience way better if you want to be a flag I say do it you're just gonna be holding a flag and marching and stuff like that marching was the first 
and best thing to do in boot camp. Like, other than the swim, um, I really loved marching because you were able to go outside, you were um, able to see other big huge divisions march by, and you're able to scream and yell. Marching was super fun, and I really miss that about being in the Navy because you don't march anymore. You march in A school, but it's not the same, and yeah, you just gotta experience it, man. Like, marching was just everything. Okay, so let's talk about the RDCs. So the RDCs are the enlisted personnel that, like I said, my first RDC was a chief. My second and my third RDC were petty officers. Um, so we call them by their pay grade, basically. We don't call them by their rate. We call them by their rank, basically. So you don't say what they are. Like, like now, um, if you see a Y and 2, I say yeoman, second class, you don't say that. You say petty officer, chief, master chief, sir, ma'am, for officers, things like that. My RDCs weren't too bad. My second RDC were not going to speak too much on him because, good lord. But other than that, um, they made it They made it kind of a fun experience. They weren't too hard on us. Our second RDC loved to IT us real bad for little things. Like, <laughs> the males were getting IT more, I feel like, um, because they want to keep the compartment clean. But there's sometimes it will fall on us. But, um... I say when you have an RDC though that is kind of hard on your division and actually wants you to be great and you might feel like they're picking on you or being rude or whatever or mean I guess, um, you actually show them that they want you to be a good sailor, um, they want you to be good in the fleet and they want, they're want they wishing you the best. I'm grateful for my RDCs, even the second one, even though he was, but I was grateful to actually kind of have someone like that because he was, you know, being real with us. So I'm going to talk to you guys about IT and PT. So IT is when, say, like, you're, like, just mind your business and all of a sudden your RDC says or tells the division to get in a front-leading rest. A front-leading rest is basically a plank position, and you're going to be just standing, sitting in that plank position, like, like this on the ground, um, until they tell you the first exercise, and they're gonna, it's more like, it's called intensive training, like, it's way more, like, harsher workouts, you're gonna feel the burn. Um, and PT is, y'all, PT, I hated PT too, because I was going to the gym every day before, so doing PT, those workouts were not helping me at all. I feel like those workouts help people that are, like, on the bigger side, but me, those, like, it was, I feel like it was a waste of time for me. Like, I wanted to do something way more, um, like, extreme, and that's why I started to, like, getting IT towards the end of boot camp, because, like, I wanted to actually feel some type of workout. I didn't want to just be doing this body weight stuff, you know? So we're gonna talk about keeping up with yourself as a female in boot camp. So I say make sure that you, you know, keep all your your stuff in like one place. Like if you're going in the shower and ahead, don't have your stuff all everywhere because people be taking stuff and some people might accidentally grab your things by accident. And you only get a shower a day, so try to like, you know, keep up with yourself, your hygiene in the best way that you can. It's kind of hard to tell you what to do by keeping up with yourself as a female. It's just like your hygiene because you don't really have that time to wash when you want to. And you're going to be sweating a lot, especially if you're going to boot camp. But like when in the summer or spring, it gets hot, so I was sweating a lot. Holiday, which is Sunday, you get like a little bit more freedom. You get like to really kind of do things that you want, but you gotta be in the compartment. You can go to chapel, um, go to church and stuff like that. I went to the Buddhism service. I really loved it. Um, it was just, a, you were just away from the compartment, away from all the yelling, and you were able to kind of just be in your own space and, you know, like just actually feel niceness and comfort from someone else that's not already see. So clean apartment, they're gonna commence clean apartment every single day, all day, every day. You're gonna be cleaning that compartment, swabbing the floors, getting dust off the floors, wiping stuff down all day, every day. Just be, I can't get too deep into that because it's like, it's, it's just explaining it for itself. You're gonna be cleaning my, like you're gonna be cleaning like a lot. Sleeping, y'all, y'all gonna be so tired in boot camp too. Like I've never slept standing up. I've slept in class, like in school, like when I was in school before I joined, but I never dozed off the way I did in boot camp in class. Cause in boot camp, you're gonna go, you're gonna have classes and stuff just like, um, kind of like high school and stuff, but you trying to stay up, it y'all, it's so hard. Like you're literally like, you're nodding off. Like it's crazy. I've never felt so tired in my life. But try to stay up. They're gonna tell you to stand up in the back if you feel like you're going to sleep. Just do it. Um, you're not gonna feel like it, but just do it because they're gonna like slam on your desk and yell at you to get up and stuff. Nobody just wants to get woken up yelled at. But like I said, don't sleep on watch and stuff like that. You're gonna get in trouble. And that just ties into the other thing with snitching. Like people will snitch on you. 
Um, and it's not just with boot camp. Like, when you get out of boot camp, you go to A school and stuff like that, people will snitch on you. Um, so just don't tell everybody your business and just be really discreet. If you are doing something you're not supposed to do, like, people are most likely watching. You're in a compartment full of people. I don't even know how many people, but it's a lot. Yeah, just be on your P's and Q's. And you need to be hydrating, drinking lots and lots of water. I feel like that is, like, the main thing in boot camp, trying to survive boot camp, is drinking your water. Like... You're going to get a big, huge hydration tool, and you need to, like, drink at least three of those a day. I'm telling you, you're going to be peeing a lot. You're going to wake up in the, in the middle of the night peeing, but you need to hydrate. Um, especially if you're going to be getting IT'd or you have, it's hot outside, you need to drink your water. Trust me. So now I'm going to give you guys some quick tips. This is kind of my experience. Um, I don't really know, like, what else to say. It's kind of sad because, like, I had, like, the idea to, like, really tell y'all everything, but, like, the nicks and crannies is just so everywhere. Like, you're always doing something in boot camp every single day. And that's, in the beginning, that's how boot camp flew. But eventually it's going to slow down once you're, like, getting closer to graduation. It's not going to be much to do. After battle stations, for real. Like, after battle stations, you're considered a sailor. That's the capping ceremony where you take off the recruit cap, you put on that Navy cap, you, you locked in. But they still kind of treat you like you're not a... Uh, a sailor they said like you're still in uh rtc great lakes you're still a recruit but you're a sailor so but yeah i'm gonna just wrap it up with my graduation experience and yeah so like i said make sure you're running a 1.5 every day you can go on google and look up your runtime that you need to pass in order to pass your RTC assessment and your opfa so make sure you're running every single day trust me i started running at the last minute but uh I should have started running a little earlier, but I did it. It was hard, but if you want to feel like more comfortable with your run and focus on your breathing, I learned that like me breathing and working on my breath work really helped me pass because I don't like to be gassed out when I'm running. And when you control your breathing, the only thing that you're in, like worried about is your legs being in pain, but your chest burning and you running out of breath and stuff, you tiring yourself out because you're trying to breathe. That won't be a factor if you know how to do breath work. So also work on that when you're running. So you need to learn that everyone is not going to be your friend. Everyone is not your friend. So you need to either just not stay out the way. You know, be cordial with people, but like kind of learn who your friends are. My rack mate, she was my real friend. Um, it was another, another girl in a bro div. She was cool. We didn't really talk that much in boot camp but when we went to a school together and me and her got really close i love her so much shout out to you thompson <laughs> don't tell everyone everything you know just be on your p's and q's like these females will smile on your face and they be on some weird shit in boot camp and i just don't get it another tip is stay quiet when you're supposed to when you're when they tell you to be quiet like literally be quiet i've learned that like i wasn't hella hella talkative but like there was times where i learned like all right like this is a great time to shut up and actually shut up study 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 for your test boy there's no feeling like the feeling that i felt when i did not pass my first test i was so scared if you don't pass your test they asthma you and stuff like that asthma is when you get set back a week or two in training because they think that you did not learn something that you were supposed to learn it's not hard just study you have so much free time on your hands that of standing around you're gonna do a lot of standing around too so open your training guide and study i'm telling you now you're gonna want to study okay because when you pass your test you don't have to read nothing that you did read ever you're gonna be moving on to the new stuff that they want you to study about to pass your test too you're only gonna have two tests test one and test two test one consists of the basics test two is like firefighting damage control and stuff like that this is the main um tip i'm gonna give you guys is stay motivated do not get unmotivated you can get the feeling of being unmotivated but it's really hard if you're kind of strong-minded but i never really got unmotivated but there was days where i was like i'm over it but it really wasn't like i want to give up i was just like done but stay motivated because it really is really easy y'all and it's just just long days well the days were short but it felt long you take it child by child dinner by dinner basically like it goes by but just try to keep a strong mind and you got this always keep your space clean your rack the inside of your rack keep it clean your rdc's will come in there and make sure everything is squared away like if it's not you're gonna get it you're gonna get in trouble like it is so easy to get in trouble for something being not folded correctly your rack not made correctly and i can say that rack thing was irritating because knowing how to do 45s this is a certain fold you have to do i couldn't get it but eventually i got it but then it needs to be like 
exactly how they want it to be. Make sure your bed is lint free, your area is lint free. Like I said before, always ask questions, do not be scared. Trust me, I was asking hella questions and I do not care. Pay attention in your classes when they just the instructors because there were instructors coming in and teaching our classes and that was really fun because they were like, you know, funny, you know, talking about their experiences. Like it was like a, it was just like kind of going to chapel. Like you just don't, you're not, with your RDC so you get a little not freedom but you just feel like relaxed you know so make sure you're paying attention and taking notes and just listening to what they have to say because it's really a lot of good information so for my ladies here's a tip when you are about to hygiene and you're gonna do laundry every day make sure that you rinse out your underwear before you put it in your knit bag to get it washed. I'm telling you, like when you rinse out your underwear, is you, it comes out more cleaner because the way that it gets washed, it's not getting cleaned how you would just put all your clothes in the washing machine individually and it's like really getting deep clean. Your stuff is in a bag getting cleaned. It's, it's hard to explain, but just trust me, just rinse out your underwear in the sink before you put it in laundry and it's gonna be way more cleaner. And also I recommend wearing, wearing panty liners um for sure because it's just you know it's just more comfortable wearing panty liners because the underwear there sucks like the underwear they give you was really loose especially when you're on your period the underwear sucked like suck so when you go to the next and you buy products stuff like face wash anything hygiene related or anything make sure you label your products because like i said people still so when they see your name on it um they might not touch it or it's just best to label it. Another tip, mind your business. Mind it. I don't believe in snitching, like unless it has something really to do with like sexual assault or things like that. Your business is not my business. I worry, my, I worry about me and myself. Just mind your business, stay out the way. So ladies, here's another thing about getting ass mode. Don't do dumb stuff with males. Like don't do any recruit to recruit. Like don't be trying to find your boo in boot camp. Like, I don't even understand how females were even doing that. I wasn't worried about that. My mind was worried about getting out. So you will get set back in training if you think you're gonna get away with kissing somebody in boot camp or hugging them. Do not hug. Don't even high five. Some people got away with high fiving. Like my RDC, <laughs> two of the males in my division high five right next to him and my RDC looked at him like, the fuck? But they didn't get in trouble. So like, I, dep I think it depends on the situation, but like, High fives are okay, but some people might snitch. It's weird, but like actual like affection being shown, don't do it. Another form of recruit to recruit is writing notes to each other. Um, do not write any notes to any of your your fellow shipmates or whatever. They are going to get you for that. They're gonna consider that a uh, recruit to recruit. Y'all, since you're not gonna have a phone, I recommend getting a watch. Your watch is gonna be your phone. And I'm not talking about no goddamn Apple Watch. I'm talking about a watch. The watch that can tell you what time it is in the day because there's nothing there to tell you that. There's a wall clock, but I don't like those. So my watch literally got me through the day because I knew what time it was. If I don't know what time it is, I'm gonna lose my mind. So get a watch. So when you're coming to boot camp, don't bring hella stuff with you. Do not bring a whole rack of stuff. Like, like bring enough stuff that can fit in a box. Like don't bring anything because they're gonna give you all your stuff. You're not gonna be even wearing or touching your civilian stuff. So do not pack like you're about to go on vacation. Like what you can do, what I did is I pre-packed things that I would want to come with me to A school. I left it home and when my peoples came to my graduation, they brought it and I took it with me on the flight. So that's what you can do if you want something, but don't bring all that stuff with you, good lord. So it is okay to be silent. It is okay to not talk. It is okay to kind of just like reflect and just not want to say anything to anybody. You're gonna feel alone at times, but silence also kind of can get you through it. Um, not saying being standoffish, but like if you don't feel like talking or you just want to be alone, it's okay. Like. It's gonna be okay. Another tip, this is like another one of my favorite tips. Embrace that you do not have your phone temporarily because y'all, I'm telling you like, once you get your phone back, it's literally the same. Like, it's so boring, like, it's boring. So you being disconnected from the world for two little short months is not really that bad. Like the only thing that you will miss if you're a music person is the music. Your RDCs will play music at some point or you will hear the music in their office which is called the fish bowl or if you pt like towards the end of boot camp like when you're about to graduate you will pt to music um but you not having your phone is not you're not gonna miss anything i'm telling you guys you're gonna enjoy being disconnected and when you get your phone back it's gonna feel so weird like it's gonna feel so fake like it's gonna look so futuristic like you're gonna be like what the 
Like, when I got my phone, and not this one, because I got the 12 when I got out, but my, e I mean, the, the 15. But when I had my 12, I had a 12. It looks so futuristic. Like, it looked like I never had this phone before. So, people say don't volunteer boot camp, but I say volunteer. I mean, like, the, the stuff that they're going to ask you to do is really not that deep. I say you don't have to necessarily volunteer for leadership positions. Like, don't, if you want to be like a yeoman, a rock, art pop, you can, but I wouldn't. Don't volunteer. But if they're going to ask you to do, like, little things, like, just do it. It gives you something to do. Keep your head up. Play your role. Get this shit done. Be smart and believe and trust in yourself that you will get through boot camp. Do not go in there thinking that you won't graduate. You can't do it. You're going to fail. Da, 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 da. You got it. It's so easy, y'all. Just run. I'm telling you. You need to run now. Like, that's the biggest thing. You need to be running. I'm so serious. I don't know what else to tell you. Run. So, I have some little small moments that were fun in boot camp. Um, I'm going to try my best to explain it the best way that I can. But, um... So my second RGC, he was a little prick. That's what I'm. A, that's the best way I'm gonna uh, describe it. But you're gonna be in a compartment with your bro div. So if you're an integrated division, which means boys and girls, you're gonna be in the compartment with the females that are not in your division. So my RDC hated my bro div, and most nights when he was on duty and he stood there, he stayed there towards the end of the night. There was like these sticks. I don't know what the sticks were for, honestly, but it was just like a like wooden sticks like at the corner of the door. And he would just knock it down every night. <laughs> like, he would just knock him on the ground. All you hear is just sticks and noise. And it was just so funny because it's like, bro, we know that it was him. We, we know he just, just threw him. That's another thing. He would throw a lot of things. I don't know what his deal was. The swim was super fun. Jumping off that platform and doing all that floating and stuff. That was fun, okay? If you can't swim, take swimming. Swimming lessons now if you can't swim and you can't pass your opfa those are two reasons or two ways that you would be set back in training or you won't graduate on time i had two people in my division that didn't graduate with us because they couldn't swim or they didn't pass the swim on time child was fun you know it got funnier over time like when people once your division got closer got comfortable with each other it was super funny when you're marching there's this thing called bombing so like if you like got your drill flag and you see another division walking on the opposite side of you, our puck will say, ready, throw, grenade. And this is what you would do. So we're all marching. He says, ready, we do like this, throw. I know this might be corny, y'all, but like, trust. It was so tough when you do it. Like, just, I wish I could show y'all a video. Like, I really wish I could. But you go, ready, throw, grenade, and then you say, boom, all at once. But it, we knew the timing for it. I don't know if this makes sense, y'all. But long story short, bombing other divisions was super fun. If you know what I'm talking about, you're going to know what I'm talking about. When you're marching, it's kind of funny when it's like... Because some people don't know how to march in the beginning. Or even if you do march and someone is not in step. Because when you're marching, you all have to be in sync on the same foot. So someone stepped on the back of my shoe. Or like it was a couple other people whose shoes got stepped on. And their shoe would come off during marching. And it would just be funny and stuff like that also tripping like if you trip because the sidewalks were kind of like little like it was cracks and stuff so tripping was funny like seeing someone almost fall was just funny so also like another fun moment is when the rdc's like calm down because like once you get closer towards the end of boot camp the rdc starts to you know relax a little bit they're not as harsh or whatever um they will crack jokes i mean they crack jokes all the time but like they started to crack jokes more and it started to get really funny battle stations was fun i can't talk about battle stations sorry but battle station is basically like everything that you do um in boot camp but i can't be too specific some of the males were actually funny um there were some that weren't but the ones that were they were hilarious overall it was just a really fun experience at the end of the day like even with the bad, like, boot camp was not hard at all. So, yeah, to sum this up, uh, I graduated October 26th. The thrill feeling of knowing that you're done was just everything. You get your phone back, the like, literally right after graduation. So, like, you graduate in this building, you got to go all the way back to your compartment to get your phone and get with your family. Your phone is most likely dead. Mine was literally still alive. I, uh, I turned it on. It was like I read. But a lot of people's phones were like not turning on. But graduation was so like it was everything. Like you actually hearing civilians' voices for the first time in a while. It's going to just be like, it's going to wow you. You're just going to be like, wow, like I did it. And I didn't cry. But I was, I almost teared up. Like because you're outside before you go in. And it's like this big 
huge garage door so you can hear the screams and yells and you're like oh my god but uh, just do it it's like no don't do it if you don't want to but i want to do it again okay me personally i wouldn't do it again but that is all that i have for you guys for my bootcamp experience video stay tuned for my next video about me telling you guys how to survive and tips and tricks I'm also going to include um, people in my division. I went around and asked, like, what is the best advice you could give someone that is going to boot camp? And I have a list right here. I was going to say it in this video, but I think it's best to save it in the next one because, you know, they said some pretty decent things. So if you really want to know, not know, because I gave y'all the nicks and crannies, but I'm going to get a little deeper really, really soon. But if you do want to know, stay tuned for that next one because that one is coming. I got more and more content coming. I am back. Okay, don't worry. I'm not going to leave y'all hanging for months like I did. I'll be doing vlogs. I'll be here. I'll be here for you guys. Bye.